Can you tell us a little bit about the journey that the Health and Wellbeing Faculty has been on since um, since the last kind of three years? So, since the last three years, what we've tried to do is we've amalgamated all areas of learning. So we've gone from a PE faculty into a wellbeing faculty or a health and wellbeing faculty. So we now take responsibility for the delivery of physical wellbeing lessons. Um, theory wellbeing lessons and nutritional lessons. The reason for that is we felt we wanted to have a thematic approach to wellbeing and we wanted to have lessons delivered by the same teacher across Key Stage 3. This has allowed us for the same teacher to deliver their practical lessons, their classroom based lessons and their nutritional lessons. We have allocated to us um, three lessons for practical lessons, one lesson for nutritional lessons lesson and one lesson for our theory-based well-being lessons. Now this allows us not only to establish excellent relationships with students but it allows us to have a thematic approach across the three areas of learning. Our now well-being faculty is able to deliver a message to promote health and well-being from as early as Key Stage 3. Okay, so at the minute we have a theme of well-being and our actual topic is how healthy are you in your community. So what we do is we might have a project-based learning where we have an authentic learning experience at the end of the project. So one of them I'm just going to explain to you is we have delivered a well-being lesson that is a link to fitness testing. So the practical lessons are geared around fitness testing, their health based both fitness tests and physical fitness tests. We've then looked at how healthy they are in comparison to people in the, their community, to peers, to friends, to family members. We've looked at how we can perhaps develop their fitness in a theory-based lesson, but then also to complement that in their health and well-being lesson, nutritional lessons, we've looked at healthy diets that could promote that well-being. So each lesson in itself across the curriculum has that linear approach that allows us to have um, an impact on every well-being lesson. It is linked, it has an authentic learning experience at the end of every project. So this term we're looking at a theme of who am I and who do I want to be to create an aspirational learner across the key stage from year seven all the way up to year nine. We're looking at maybe creating this global citizenship with international countries. We have links with New Zealand. So we, we're actually, what we're trying to do is research in our community within a uh, theory-based lesson. We're looking at other countries' sports and we're going to link those in practically to the lesson, how they involve what sort of sort of cultures and aspects of sport they, they use in that country. We're then going to try our best to try and create and establish a working relationship with these international schools so the children can form a relationship with them and also develop in their literacy skills when they are right down. Um, you mentioned skills then. You've obviously done a lot of work in promoting um, literacy and numeracy and digital competency skills through those lessons. Can you give us an, some examples of how in health and wellbeing theory lessons as a, as a faculty you've um, uh, planned that into the curriculum? So um, we've been quite lucky in respect that we do have a very supportive head teacher who's allowed us independent planning days um, and with myself and my TLR holders have been able to sit down, look at the four core purposes, be able to look at within that, once we've mapped out those skills within the four, key four purposes, we've been able to ensure that for every project based lesson our end purpose is that it is actually 
um, hitting one of our literacy skills, whether it's literacy, numeracy or DCF, that the project itself is able to fit in with our key skills.